Greetings. Today, we've got the Granvillator. <laughs> the Granvillator. So apparently you serve this at minus 10. Today, we're going to talk about centrifugal force, radial versus non-radial, okay? Greetings! Today, we're going to talk about centrifugal force, radial versus non-radial. And we have the Granvillator, strong beer, supposed to drink it at minus 10. Yeah, right. Okay. Crack this open with a rock. so good even though it's not at minus 10 it's really good oh man okay just have a little more well it's not gonna last too long okay so some people still think they live on this ball and that they're going uh, over a thousand miles faster than a speeding bullet, no, over a thousand times faster than a speeding bullet in over five directions and you can't feel a thing. Not the slightest tremor on the water, nothing. Okay, that's obviously false. So, how they've been justifying this, it's between, uh, well, they just want to talk about gravity, okay, and how it's so much stronger than centrifugal force, okay, 300 times, and that's what accounts for everything, why you stick onto the ball at a thousand miles an hour, you don't fly off, uh, how the water's on the ball, and uh, even why the ball doesn't explode from spinning. Okay, well it turns out reality has limits and they're based on molecular bonds. So the limit of physical reality is about a thousand miles per hour. The globe does more than that. And the only material we know so far that can withstand that is solid titanium. Okay, that's it. And it can barely make it to 1,000 miles per hour, the surface speed, okay? 1,000 miles per hour. Okay, that creates radial centrifugal force, which is internal, okay? And that's what this video is about, the difference between non-radial and radial. And what the globe heads do, it's so simple. They just try to trick you by trying to account for all their BS with non-radial centrifugal force. What is non-radial centrifugal force? Take this ball, tie a string to it, okay? Let's say make the string go all the way to the sun and start swinging it around. 
okay? You know, that's non-radial because the, the only tension is just going to be in that string. Okay, it's just linear. It's one straight line. And the only thing that can account for is, let's say, why you don't fly off because it depends on radius. So the bigger the radius, the tinier the force you're going to feel, the flying off force. And uh, that's going to be the one in the 300 to one ratio. And then gravity is like, oh, it's 300 times more this way. No, that's ridiculous. Okay, that can't account. The reason they have to do that is because they have to ignore the radial centrifugal force, which is in the object that spins on its axis, okay, that wants, wants it to explode. <laughs> so you can't ignore that, although that's what they try to do. You can't. Because for all intents and purposes, throughout the whole entire globe religion, they treat this as a solid object. So it's got a, the physics also have to apply. And that means the internal stress, it's called hoop stress. Okay. And nothing can survive a thousand miles per hour. What it also has going against it is the mass. Because the mass increases the force directly whereas radius okay is uh you divide by radius okay divide velocity by radius and then you get a weaker force but on the top of the equation you have weight and the bigger that gets the bigger f gets and the f i'm talking about is the internal radial centrifugal force okay so let's uh let's get into this a little don't worry it'll make a lot of sense i'm just warming up here it's a pretty complex topic but i'm going to make it simple <clears throat> okay so what we're gonna do, we're gonna cheat in the globe's favor, okay? And we're gonna use these two rings to illustrate the principle. So you can totally understand what the lie is in the globe religion. Why it can never, ever, ever work, ever period. Okay, so. The main point I'm gonna bring out here is that radius is only a variable in non-radial centrifugal force. When you get to radial centrifugal force, radius factors right out of the equation. Okay? And this is why. And this, oh, this is all you, once you know this, that's it. The globe is done. So, we've got two rings here. Okay? Six inch and eight inch. Okay. So, <coughs> how does radius factor out of the equation? It's very simple. It's both on top of the equation and at the bottom. And so, so F equals, let's say, MA, uh, mass times acceleration, right? But you're going to have a radius variable on top, and you're going to have a radius variable at the bottom. Okay? And then it's just going to factor right out. So... That's because weight varies with radius, okay? So the radius variable, is, you know, so it's force equals ma, mass times acceleration. So that m, there's a more complicated equation that you're going to substitute in for that m. And it's going to have radius as a variable, and it's not going to be divided by radius. So the bigger radius gets, the bigger the weight is going to be because you've added more mass. Okay, so let's just deal with the top of the equation right now. Okay, so let's call it part one. So you got the small ring and you're going to increase the radius, but you've also increased the mass. Okay, you've added weight to the ring as well. Okay, so that's the R. So you're increasing radius, that's the R on top of the equation. So F equals MA. But then, 
you're increasing radius, you know, you're going to have to divide velocity by it because velocity is inversely related to radius. So that puts R at the bottom of the equation. So F equals MA, A is going to be divided by R, M is going to be multiplied by R. So the R's just cancel out. <laughs> and um, the radius of fake low birth is, you know, a few thousand, several thousand miles. Okay, 6,000, 7,000, whatever. Okay, but the weight, the number's got like 25 zeros after it, okay? So you see, F is going to be so overwhelmingly huge that they have to ignore it. That's it. Okay? F is going to have at least 20 zeros, okay, or more. And it's measured in PSI, pounds per square inch. Okay, do you see any tension anywhere in the globe, in the ground, in the water? I mean, can you play tug of war with water and loose sand? Okay, and that's going to handle uh, uh, <laughs> an astronomical number, um, F having like 20 zeros, 25 zeros worth of PSI in the ground while it's all being kept together by some magic force? No. Okay, and that force, the Okay, so <laughs> it so much overwhelms uh, the BS gravity that they've invented that they literally have to ignore the proper physics. So what it comes down to is they have uh, fake physics, fake math, and fake forces. So the fake physics is where they... Um, the globe is a broken ball, okay, so that's the fake physics. You can only spin an intact object on its axis, okay, so already the globe is done right there. You can't spin a broken ball, okay, that's fake physics. The fake math, they try to make it seem like it works. They justify it by substituting non-radial centrifugal force for radial centrifugal force. They have to ignore the radial centrifugal force because as I just told you, it's so huge. They just simply cannot cover it. They have to ignore it and in, you know, use the fake physics. Broken balls can spin. Let's uh, apply the non-radial centrifugal force math with is like springing a ball on a string. And then fake forces, gravity, to support, they have to invent gravity to support the other two fakes, the physics and the math, okay? You know, an object drops, that's just because it's more dense, the air is less dense. That's all you need to explain it. There's no force pulling on this, okay? And then when you get into how they're gonna say, oh, it's keeping the earth together, it's a broken ball due to plate tectonics BS, well, that's crazy because it's an imaginary force. There's no source to it. So they're telling you, you know, the surface of the Earth isn't falling. So, you know, all they did was they took the acceleration, free fall acceleration, and then they just multiply it by a mass and say, oh, you got a force. Okay, it's stupid. And the 300 to 1 ratio, all the units cancel out, and even the, the mass itself that they're talking about cancels out, and you're just left with a contrived, meaningless, 300 to 1 ratio. You never use that in engineering. You might use uh, free fall acceleration, but you're not going to use a 300 to 1 ratio for anything in engineering that I know of. Okay? So, just want to make sure we covered some of the basics. Yeah, so we did. So that's it. So, radius is out, and all of their math depends on radius. So, it's over right there. So this ring, when you're seeing it at the blog, this is laid out very nicely at spin1.flat.wtf, spin2.flat.wtf, and spin3.flat.wtf. Those are the three key pages. And I was inspired by Moonshiner to rewrite every detail of each of those three pages. Okay, now they are 
practically perfection. And probably going to be converted into a book. So something that people can have, a physical record of the facts. But it's very nicely explained on the blog. But I want to do a little more here because I want to put this video on the first page. So again, we're just talking about the difference between radial and non-radial centrifugal force. So we said ra uh, non-radial is just the ball on the string. It depends on radius. But radial is when you take this object and spin it around its axis. And so we already talked about how this ring cheats in the globe's favor because we've eliminated all the mass. So what we want to do now is kind of explain to you a little more how radius factors out again. Like I mentioned how it's, you know, varies directly with weight, inversely with velocity, so that it's both on top and the bottom, it cancels out. But let's look at it in terms of two different size rings. Okay, and then we said, um, so if this was, uh, we're gonna go into hoop stress now. And if this was a one inch diameter, ring of let's say titanium and this is also one inch diameter ring of titanium but it's only six inches wide and this is eight inches well when you spin them at the same surface speed so the rpm will be different it'll be less rpm for the bigger object more rpm for the smaller one you start spinning those so they both have a thousand miles per hour surface speed Okay, the breaking, the force that's going to break it, because it'll just break, is going to be the same for both rings. doesn't matter if the radius was 10,000 miles. As long as the surface speed is the same, that's all that matters. That's the only variable. Okay, and this is explained beautifully on the blog, especially on the Spin 3 page, and, um, you know, equations, everything. And I don't really want to bother with that right now. I just want to talk about the concepts here so that's it so a tension builds up in here as you spin this okay it's just like if you took a rope and you pulled on it you can pull on a short rope or a longer rope the tension will still be pretty much the same if you tied it to two horses and they're pulling on it okay and that's the same with these rings if you're spinning them at the same surface speed the tension inside each one of them is going to be the same regardless of the diameter okay no radius involved and that's the whole trick once you understand that the globe is done now let's turn this into a globe okay take this ring and we'll make it a globe we have to add um, all that extra mass to this ring and all of that goes on the top of the equation okay and that's why you get you're going to have the ripping force is going to be like 20 zeros or more, okay? It's stupid. There's no tension in the ground to indicate that this object is spinning on its axis, period. Okay, it's done right there and dusted. Okay, they have nothing. Okay, and if you were to do, if you were to pretend this was a solid sphere, like the globe religion does for, for everything, for orbiting, for everything, they pretend it's a solid sphere, okay? then it, the mass of it alone, it could never spin. Okay, you start trying to get a 1,000 mile per hour surface speed on this, you're crazy, it will never happen. Just do a little bit of the calculations and you'll see the breaking point, which is total centrifugal force divided by two pi, F over two pi, and I'm talking about radial centrifugal force here, which isn't dependent on radius. And uh, it'll be so huge, okay? So there's no way it can work, all right? So let me just have a sip here, make sure I've covered everything. So we said the limits of physical reality is 1,000 miles per hour. And solid titanium, if you spin it on its axis, it can come pretty close to 
to handling a thousand miles per hour and uh, so when you start spinning you got the radial you got centrifugal force it's the same at every point okay f over 2 pi f over 2 pi equals disruptive stress which equals a coefficient times v squared and v is going to, velocity is going to be in feet per second so all this is on the block don't worry about those details okay so thing to understand is you start spinning this there's this expansion force that builds up and it's the same at every single point and that makes sense okay that's radial center for force that makes sense just just as much sense as if you had a rope and you're pulling on it okay two horses on either end if you had a short rope a big rope the tension is going to be the same at every point in that rope okay that would just assume like the rope doesn't have any weight to drag down. Like if you have a mile long rope, that's going to add more complicated math. So to understand concepts, you simplify the math. You imagine, you know, these two rings and you spin them around. Okay. I mean, they don't have to, you know, it's just to understand how radius disappears. Okay. Because we already explained that. So... There it is. So if you take their ball and you try to apply their 300 to 1 ratio to the broken ball, you know, it could never ever work. Ever. Okay? It's that simple. They say, oh, 300 to 1, that's impossible. Because what about the hoop stress? How are you, are you just going to ignore that? Yes, you are, Globehead. You're going to ignore that. Okay, now let's just look at how stupid and retarded gravity is. How it just does not save them in any way, shape, or form. Because remember, we had the fake physics, fake math, and the fake forces invented to support the other two fakes. Well, let's just see that they debunk themselves right there again. Okay, let's just talk about that. So... Gravity, <laughs> they don't know where it comes from. You could see that black guy who, who I said in the other video, his parents are uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Burt Reynolds, okay? They made uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And of course, uh, Mickey Kaku I mentioned at the other video. Um, Whoopi Goldberg again, and E.T. <laughs> That makes Mickey Kaku. So they're related. All these Illuminatis are related. Okay. I just threw that in there as a bonus. But anyways, he admits, and, you know, gravity is still officially a theory. Nobody knows where it comes from. Well, let's uh, look at what they say. It goes to zero from the surface out and then back to zero from the surface towards the center. Well, wait a minute. That's crazy. Imagine a bicycle wheel, okay? And they're saying gravity keeps the ball from exploding, okay? That's what they say. So they're ignoring the magnitude of the braking force that has to be, you know, present. And it's not. And so they're just going to say, well, you know, um, gravity... I mean, think about it. The spoke wheel, <laughs> sorry, I lost track there. The spoke wheel would make sense. Like if you imagine gravity as being the spokes and the spokes are like holding the objects on the surface and they're right at the center. Okay, so the spoke goes right to the center. But if gravity goes to zero at the center, okay, zero, well, how would you have to try to demonstrate that with the spoked wheel, a spoked rim? Because I can understand, you know, it could make sense. You've got a pulling force and it's kind of keeping it all together somehow. You'd have to file the spokes until they weren't connected at the hub anymore. Okay, so that'd be like taking your ball on a string, the globe on a string, okay, but cutting the string. So... 
what's holding the, the globe going around the sun? Or what's holding the different plate tectonics together? When that force goes to zero towards the center, it'd be like cutting the spokes off on the bike tire. And then also the, the rim of the tire is also in sections. It's just all gonna fall apart. It's gonna fall to pieces. So you see how stupid the globe religion is. It's a total religion. It debunks itself. There is no science to the globe religion. It doesn't have a working model. It's a complete fraud based on lies. Okay? And we just talked about some of them here. Okay? It's beautifully organized at the blog. Okay? You need to let that sink in. Okay? So even their bogus, their gravity and their 3 to 1 ratio doesn't work. Okay? At all. Period. Okay? They try to say, oh, it applies into a segment. No. Okay? You can't say there's less gravity. So it, even their version of gravity relies on an intact object. Okay? You can't spin a broken ball, but let's say you got this gravity pulling on it on all the pieces and they say well if you got 10 strings pulling on the one piece or one string no it doesn't work like that okay it doesn't work like that one good string pulling on it I don't care or 10 the force in that intact piece is going to be the same you can't just like draw lines on it to say okay here's a 10 foot section here's a 10 foot section here's a 10 foot section but they're still all stuck together and say in that 10 foot section there's that much gravity. In that 10 foot section, there's that much gravity. You know, it, adding it up in increments, it doesn't work like that. Okay, take uh, take this ball, start spinning it on a string. Okay, it doesn't matter if I put the string in the top half of the ball, the bottom half of the ball, you know, the middle of the ball. Every part of that ball is feeling the exact same centrifugal force, even in their math, okay? And just like, you know, when you prop in hoop stress, when you're spinning on the axis, the tension is the same at every point, okay? So that applies to both types of centrifugal force. And yet, the globe heads will tell you different, okay? That's it. They'll just say each little segment has a little bit of the total, and they spread the total all the way around their ball. You can't do that. It doesn't work like that. Each segment has its own total amount. It doesn't matter what part of that segment you're talking about. It's the same across the board. Okay? So you're done, globe heads. Okay? You have nothing. All right? Nothing. Okay. So this is just one version of the material. It's uh, again much better presented at the blog I think. But I did want to have a discussion just for the sake of pointing out the difference between radial and non-radial centrifugal force and that's it. All their arguments when they say oh but the 300 to 1, no there is no 300 to 1. Okay, That's a figment of their imagination of their globe head. Okay? Oh no, globe head doesn't exist it's impossible okay? they can write it out on paper they can talk about it all they want it's still fantasy it does not exist okay it's that simple um, also gravity doesn't even oppose the radial centrifugal force because the radial centrifugal force comes at 90 degrees to the axis okay comes off the axis at 90 degrees Gravity comes from, well, from nowhere. It goes to zero from every angle to the center. So the only place is if you took a ring out of the ball right at the equator, took that slice and had the spokes on it. But even then, even then, it won't work because gravity goes to zero towards the center. And you need to have something to keep those sections down, okay? That's it. Once you know that gravity goes to zero <laughs> towards the center, it's done. Okay, you have 
nothing all right so that's it so hoop stress is basically radial centrifugal force but it's converted by the molecular bonds into a tangential ripping force so that just comes off at the sides okay so like at this point here it's pushing out but creates a tension in the ring okay pushing out but the rings tensed and the ripping force for a one inch square rim the radial force is going to be the same as the ripping force because the ripping force is in psi so if it's thicker you know the ring will be a little stronger but when you just want to isolate the principle you want to use the simplest math possible that's what how it's explained in the engineering books and that's it so the ripping force it's going to be the same as the radial force f over 2 pi for a one inch square ring of any material and uh, so that's it and what more could i say uh, <laughs> there's no tension in the ground to indicate that either gravity is pulling all the pieces of the broken ball together or to indicate the ripping force needed to be present in an intact object that's spinning there's no tension in the ground so it's done it's just a contrived fraud mathematical fraud on paper and that's it anybody can just take free fall acceleration and start multiplying mass to it and inventing all this bullshit physics um, you know it's distributed incrementally and all that BS it doesn't work like that okay Jeez. I was gonna do drawings and everything but I don't think I need to I think that if you just go to the blog all the drawings are there but if you want I can do a few drawings why not got the paper right here so let's just uh, so the video is over I just wanted to point out the difference between radial and non radial centrifugal force let's just go over that quick here so you got the, the ball on a string okay the globe earth has to account for the string because it's not there and the hand that rotates it Okay, they can't account for those two things, but the Earth is somehow spinning. Okay, stupid. And gravity goes to zero at the center, where it actually needs, it, it should be the same strength all the way through because you're attached at the hub because you're trying to hold those top pieces in. Stupid. So let's just see the stupidity here. Okay. So I drew there a slice out of the equator, okay, different segments, we'll just color them in a bit. Okay, so we'll just draw, so this is a similar diagram as the blog, and it would make sense if gravity did not go to zero at the center, okay, but it does, okay. It's just a void here, okay. So that doesn't make any sense. You can't have gravity going to zero and thinking that you're going to keep all those pieces together as if the ball was a solid object and it's going to go over a thousand miles an hour, something that solid titanium could not even do. Okay, it doesn't work like that. So I'll just give you the equation. Um, Okay, so you have a 
Hold on. F over 2 pi equals S, disruptive stress, equals coefficient times V squared. Okay. I hope that came through. Should have. Okay, that's the relationship. Radius is not involved at all. And so, yeah, what can I say? I mean, this is destroys the globe religion outright. So that's the basics right there. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that, you know, I did the video as simply as I possibly could. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's just fake physics, fake math, fake forces. There is no way they can account for their spinning ball, period. That's it. You can't spin a broken ball. It has zero tensile strength. You need tension. Tension is created when you spin something, okay? And so there's no magic force that you don't know where it comes from, and it's somehow making everything just peachy. Keeping everything together on Earth, right? Sure it is. No, it's not. Okay. And that's it. And that's... The end of the globe!